My name is Donovan Savanto. Um, this is actually my first video stream, or video recording, of Dungeon Defenders 2. I'm going to be doing a tutorial on basically how to do every map with each class. I'm really hoping that you'll kind of bear with me though. It's been a little while since I've played, however I do have level 25s of each class. Um, <clears throat> so this is going to be an experience for all of us and let's hope we all enjoy it. Thanks. So first I'm going to make sure, yep, I have my level 1 selected, um, I have two level 25s already in my card selection. I, If I remember correctly, after Foundation 1, I can no longer use them to help myself out, so this is going to be a solo build for each class, which means I'm only going to use the one class that I have, and I'm not going to be using a group. Okay, so apparently it wants me to play as level 25s. I'm going to end up having to go back and fix that, if you will give me a second. And thank god that did not go through. That'll actually save us quite a bit of time. So I'm going to be selecting campaign mode, play solo, and hopefully it'll let me through this time. I'm hoping the servers aren't too full. There we go. Okay, now due to certain things I'm going to be, like circumstances being that I have so much equipment and money already some things are going to be a little bit easier for me I'm going to have be able to select better equipment but I'm going to try and be as fair as I can so that way you guys get a realistic tutorial and not a well not something that's a little bit overdone so we're going to start with the gates of dragonfall on normal And I think I'm going to be breaking up each um, each map into its own video. Um, should certain things arise, I've actually never played the camp the new campaign mode, so this is going to be interesting. I don't know how things progress. Um, so, should it allow me to go do some of the lower levels as a higher level? Um, we're gonna have to kind of play that by ear. I kind of want to do each map as I go Going from let's say level one doing this one level two doing the next one if it will allow me I'm not really quite sure what I can get away with now This map is fairly easy. You only have three lanes to defend so your best bet is to try and set up your towers so that they will cover both the right lane, the middle lane, and the left lane, if at all possible. Now with the level one, this can be very difficult, so I'm just going to be doing one per each lane. And I'm going to set it up so they fire directly down each lane. This map is actually, like I said, very easy. It's meant to kind of ease you into everything, so things are going to get more complicated as we go. And I'm a little bit OCD, so this is got to be a little bit better. Okay. So now, let's keep going. Basically, with your cannons, you can just make a wall. Makes it very, very simple. Very easy. I mean... They only cost about 30 a piece, and they do all the damage that you really need. I, from what I've seen in incursions, cannons have actually gotten a lot more useful 
they've actually made it so that way. With your cannons, you can actually make a fairly decent defense, as whereas before, they weren't as useful as the ballistas. Some of the ballistas, from what I've been seeing, are causing disconnection problems. Thus, the ad adaptation to the cannons. So starting my combat phase, you'll see that having three on each lane, this is actually going to be kind of pointless at this point. They're, they're not going to be able to really make it any further than that. I almost guarantee it, except for um, javelin throwers, which you will hear, see here in a couple of minutes. Not, I don't believe they show up this round. Now obviously you pick up the blue and green gems, blue, blue gems being mana, you hardly ever use them unless you're either a mage or a huntress. Um, as a squire, you can use them to tank, but that's not until much later. Green mana is what you want to pick up in order to uh, build your defenses. So obviously that's a uh, uh, rather good necessity move. going to be equipping probably a lot of the equipment that I see. In order to make it so that way I am at least slightly better equipped than I am right now because I have absolutely no gear on. Now, here's a tip for you. Instead of repairing, I personally like to upgrade. It saves a lot of mana, makes your towers a hell of a lot stronger. And I'm actually really surprised they managed to break through the defenses that you normally don't. So that was a bit of a surprise. And apparently they've made it so that way experience points build rather quickly. As you can see, I went straight from level 1 to level 3 in only one round. So I'm assuming I'm probably going to be hitting level 25 here very quickly due to the attempt at a rebalance to make it so the game progresses faster for people who are trying to do power plays or want to do incursions faster. They really, really wanted level the uh, levels one through twenty to be a tutorial, something to get you kind of get your like hands in the game, get used to it. So we'll see how this goes. As you can see, my cannonball towers are now holding up a lot better. And I think I found the flaw that is making it so that they can actually hit my cannonball towers. They're actually hitting the blind spot, so I'm going to have to fix that here. Which, in all honesty, is a very easy fix. You set up one. Whoa. My mouse is being a little bit buggy here. Hold on. Anyway, you set them up behind the defenses so that way they can defend your defenses. Now I know that may sound stupid and kind of redundant, but it'll actually make a lot of sense here in the next few rounds. Because if you have something that can shoot at what's hitting you, when nothing else can, it, it tends to make a very big difference. Now, being a level 3, I cannot go past the rank 2 or tier 2 that most of my towers are already at. 
but as you can see that this build is rather effective it really hasn't taken me a whole lot to get it to work I still have 440 um, mana that I'm allowed to build with um, that's basically the base cost of whatever you're laying down so upgrading is definitely something that needs to be done and I I just realized I switched up my hotkeys back to default. I used to have it so different button when you clip, so I've been doing this without any equipment. But now, basically, my cannonball towers are in, for lack of a better term, just mowing them down. They're, the next two rounds are going to be pretty, pretty self-explanatory. I'm not going to have to do very much. If javelin throwers do come into play, then um, I'm going to actually have to watch for them. I don't believe my can, my cannonball towers can actually reach them at this level. So they can easily destroy almost any of your towers but they did rebalance like i said the cannonball towers so they did shoot a little bit farther to make for more fair gameplay because when you first started off as a squire it made it very difficult Now, there is a lot of debate on which stats are best for builds. Um, I have actually found that if you do really want to do the most damage, going for a strength and speed build, or a power and speed build, are your best bets. Um, you want to keep them rather even, so that way you have the highest amount possible. Or the highest DPS possible, because the way that it works is F, it, it works as a downward quadratic. Your first few stats add a lot more to it. Your last few stats, not so much. So if you if you're at like for an example, 900 tower power versus and not and 500 tower speed, you'd be better off going with 800 tower power and 600 speed because the 600 speed is going to affect the damage per second a lot more than the 100 that it would take for that. Because of the new balance, um, this tutorial might actually be lacking a little bit because of the fact that the cannonball tower seems a little bit too overpowered. Um, however, as of right now, this is still going to work for the players, and I hope it's being informative enough to actually help you out. Um, I'm not really having to do too much. I mean, if I, re I can repair my towers now if I really want to but I don't see it making much of a difference. And I'm having some issues apparently. 
There we go. Now you'll notice some of these achieve achievements actually give you experience points. Now, if you want a power level, one of the best ways I've found is to use ballistas. Ballistas actually give you a extra, um, kind of like an extra special gain. It, it's like 100 experience every five or ten seconds once they start coming in really hard based on how many kills you get and sometimes you get even more than that if you can get enough of them in a row. Um, I'll explain that later on in another video when it actually applies if at all possible so you guys can kind of see what goes on. And I had more mana than I knew what to do with. Like I said, very simple build, works really well. Some of the other maps are even easier. Um, there's actually a couple of maps that if they haven't changed things up too much, I can do it with about four ballistas almost all the way to the very end. And I just save up green mana to build and upgrade to that. Now that is actually a monk and squire build, you end up using the boost tower from the monk and the four ballistas from the squad. It works out really well. Now, with this being my very first video, I'm going to. Ooh, an epic. That's nice. With this being my first video, I'm going to be stopping it here so that way I can actually post it to you guys and kind of see what's going on. Um, see if this is actually going to be worth posting to everybody so that way they can actually um, kind of enjoy what I'm trying to do because there's really no point in this otherwise. Alright, so you guys all have a good night um, and hopefully I'll post another video tomorrow.